It's been a rough year for the Rust for Linux project, as it aims to integrate the Rust programming language into the Linux kernel, but not without skepticism and resistance from the Linux dev community, with ongoing debates and some maintainer resignations, including the co-founder Hector Martin passing the torch on SIE Linux and separating himself from Linux kernel development as a maintainer. But with these ongoing debates, Greg Crow Hartman has definitely advocated recently for the Rust contributions, so we're going to be checking out a bold new prediction in the technical progress of the driver development as Rust-based drivers are becoming more prevalent in the kernel, and we'll get to that after talking about some wins for Rust in the recent weeks. First off, a loss. Sven here from Acai Linux has posted, looks like the M4 support for Acai Linux is going to be rather painful. We're still focusing on upstreaming the M1, M2 support, but other people have been trying to bring up the M1, N1 on the M4, and it looks like a few things change, which really sucks for Acai Linux as it's a project dedicated to porting over Linux to Apple Silicon Max. And they've been making great effort and progress on that front with M1 and the M2. And a big involvement from the team has been developing GPU drivers for those architectures. And they're using Rust of its memory safety and concurrency. This has helped them make rapid and reliable progress on creating drivers that manage GPU memory and the DRM, largely in part ran by Hector Martin, but now the team not only has lost one of their main maintainers, but they're running into major issues with the M4. When configuring a macho boot object, we now get dropped into an environment where Apple's SPTM is running in GL2, and we are supposed to talk to it from EL2 with MMU already enabled to set up page tables. This neither works for Linux nor for running XNU under our hypervisor to reverse engineer the hardware. This is going to be a bit of an uphill battle as the M4 is the latest and greatest in the Apple Silicon family. Apple's proprietary system is making it harder to actually do that. Either way, the Acai Linux team is going to have trouble bringing Linux to the latest Apple Silicon Max as Rust has played a huge role in actually developing these safe and efficient GPU drivers on this platform. But with this bad news comes some good news as the Ferrocene language specification, also known as FLS, has been donated to the Rust project in a recent event. As mentioned here, Ferris System donates Ferrocene language specification. Well, what does that mean? Well, by integrating FLS into the Rust project, it aims to establish an authoritative language specification that's going to enhance clarity and consistency for developers and more than likely help Rust's adoption in regulated sectors. As Rust matures with over a decade of growth, and the claim here is Rust has become one of the fastest growing and most loved languages among developers. And for those of you who are unaware of FLS, it is a description of the Rust programming language developed by Ferris Systems and Adicore. In July of 2022, as part of Ferrocene, a Rust compiler and tool chain designed for safety critical and regulated industries, the FLS provides a structured and detailed reference for Rust syntax, semantics, and behavior, serving as a foundation for verification and compliance, and also standardization efforts. Since Rust did not have an official language specification back then, nor a plan to write one, the FLS represented a major step towards describing Rust in a way that aligns with industry requirements, particularly high assurance domain. Ferris Systems has been the sole steward of the FLS since July 23. So now we understand why the Rust project officially adopting the FLS is important because this supports the use of Rust in safety critical systems. Think things like aerospace, automotive, and medical. It's a big step for Rust as they officially gain the standard. Take a moment and subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video like this. Also, take a moment to smash that like button on the way back up. Let's continue on. The Rust blog also talks about adopting the FLS and how things have happened from its viewpoint. Some years ago, Ferris Systems and Adicore worked together to assemble a description of Rust called the FLS. Ferris Systems has since been faithfully maintaining and updating the document for new versions of Rust, and they've successfully used it to qualify tool chains based on Rust for use in safety critical industries. Seeing this success, others have also begun to rely on the FLS for their own qualification efforts when building Rust. The members of the Rust project are passionate about shipping high quality tools that enable people to build reliable systems at scale. Such software is exactly the kind needed by those in safety critical industries. And consequently, we've become increasingly interested in better understanding and serving the needs of these customers of our language and our tools. 
So again, why does this matter? Well, the FLS has been used to qualify Rust-based tool chains for safety standards, which is a major requirement for regulated industries. It definitely is a major step towards becoming a first-class language that have certified reliability and safety for these types of regulated industries. This will hopefully bring more increased trust and adoption of Rust, at least boost the confidence in these institutions that require mission-critical applications. Again, think aerospace, medical, and ultimately what this will bring is just stability, predictability, and long-term support additions for these types of domains. Not only for the domains, but for us as well, as the FLS will work in tandem with the Rust reference, the current language documentation. So in short here, the FLS is a big win for Rust credibility and safety critical systems, and that's all fantastic as we move on to a prediction. As Josh Az, who's a prominent figure in the field of internet security and open source software development, he co-founded the Internet Security Research Group in 2013 and currently serves as the executive director. For those of you that don't know, the Internet Security Research Group is the nonprofit organization behind the Let's Encrypt, a free automated and open source certificate authority. In his prediction, under his blog, where I'm going to put a link in the description below, amidst all the drama that's been happening in the kernel between the Rust and C divide, Josh writes, while our goal was never to rewrite the entire kernel and Rust, we are glad to see growing acceptance of Rust's benefits in various subsystems. Today, multiple companies have full-time engineers dedicated to working on Rust Linux kernel, as we recently noted by Jonathan Corbet, kernel maintainer and executive editor of LWN. In my mind, the Rust for Linux project has already achieved an important goal, providing that Rust is indeed a viable and desirable language for kernel development. This work is important for the long-term viability of Linux, and I'm glad that it is succeeding. There are several efforts that are now underway, and Josh mentions things that have been upstream to users, as well as which targeted upstream users are next. So we've seen driver implementations of the Phi drivers, Null Block Driver, and the DRM, Direct Rendering Manager, Panic Screen, with a QR code generator. The next things that are being targeted are Android Binder Driver, Apple AGX GPU Driver, an MVME Driver, and the Nova GPU Driver. The prediction here is that we expect that one of them will be merged into the mainline kernel in the next 12 to 18 months. In a recent 6.13 merge window, Greg Crow Hartman noted Rust miscellaneous driver bindings and other Rust changes to make miscellaneous drivers actually possible. I think this is a tipping point. Expect to see way more Rust drivers going forward now that these bindings are present. The next merge window, hopefully we will have PCI and platform drivers working, which will fully enable almost all driver subsystems to start accepting or at least getting Rust drivers. This is the end result of a lot of work from a lot of people. Congrats to all of them for getting this far. You proved many of us wrong in the best way possible working code, which we're going to go into this quote from Greg because I feel that it is important. But Josh makes a bold prediction. At this point, the goal of the effort will start to be realized. Products and services running Linux with Rust drivers will be more secure, and that means that people using them will be more secure too. We'd like to thank Miguel for tirelessly working on the effort and thank the Alpha Omega project for their financial support. This is an important prediction because there are claims that this is a turning point for the security and sustainability of the Linux kernel development, mentioning how real-world adoption is getting nearer and nearer. With several Rust drivers for things like the Apple GPUs, MVME drives, Android, are getting close to being merged into the mainline Linux kernel. Whether you like Rust in Linux or not, well, some of the major key players, including basically the second in command, Greg Crow Hartman, noting a big win for Rust. This all came from Greg Crow Hartman, who's a prominent software developer and has made extensive contributions to the Linux kernel. He serves as a main maintainer for several critical subsystems of the Linux kernel, including the stable branch, USB, driver core, and TTY layers. He's been part of the Linux Foundation Fellowship since February of 2012, and again is basically the second in command behind Linus Torvalds himself. As this email was sent to Linus from Greg, KH, shortened, and that's what I'm going to call him from now on, as in these character miscellaneous IIO whatever driver subsystem updates for Linux kernel version 6.13 RC1, Greg mentions loads of things in here and even a fun merge conflict. Rust miscellaneous driver bindings and other Rust changes to make miscellaneous drivers actually possible. I think it's the tipping point to expect to see way more Rust drivers going forward now that these bindings, presumably the Rust ones, 
are present. Next merge window, hopefully we will be able to have PCI and platform drivers working, which will fully enable almost all driver subsystems to start accepting or at least getting Rust drivers. This is an end result of a lot of work from a lot of people. Congrats to all of them for getting it this far. You've proved many of us wrong in the best way possible work code. And then Greg goes on to talk about some of the other driver updates that have been made. So I reread that one because I think it's an important endorsement to realize. As, again, Greg KH is a leading figure in the Linux kernel development, serving as the maintainer of several key subsystems, his endorsement of Rust and the programming language in the Linux kernel carries significant weight. One, he's been addressing the persistent security issues that occur with subtle little corner cases at C, which Rust inherently avoids. He's clearly influencing community adoption. As a top maintainer, Greg KH's support signals to the developer community that Rust is a viable and beneficial to the kernel dev. Whether you like it or not, his say goes a long way, again with Linus Torvalds, and he's a definite influence to Linus. Also, Greg KH's advocacy has influence in shaping development policies in the Linux kernel. His support and stance on the gradual integration of Rust in the Linux kernel will set a precedence for how the kernel will inevitably incorporate the modern programming. So in summary here, Greg KH's endorsement of Rust seems to be pretty large, as he calls this a pivotal moment, calling it the tipping point in which we should expect more Rust drivers going forward. I want to know your thoughts on all of this. I know there's a lot of debate on whether Rust should even exist in the Linux kernel, but it seems like more and more every day, we're getting more and more Rust code in the Linux kernel, and there's been significant technical and developmental progress. So I definitely want to hear from you. Don't forget to go subscribe below for more videos like this. Also, smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.